Welcome to Power System Protection Lecture Series. I'm Pratap Mysore, and today I will be uh, talking about the fault analysis, the final lecture out of the four. In the previous uh, lectures, we covered uh, uh, the per unit and percent values. Uh, we looked at uh, the voltages and currents and uh, uh, impedances in terms of per units instead of volts, amps, and ohms. And then MVA also, we converted that as a per unit and we used the base uh, ratings or MVA and KV of the system. Okay. And then uh, we also introduced the concept of symmetrical components. The idea of this was to convert an unbalanced three phase network into a set of uh, balanced uh, uh, three phase networks so that we can reduce uh, the network as a, to a single phase uh, value and then try to go through the, uh, then calculate the currents and voltages and then convert back to the three phase phase quantities. Uh, that was the intent. We also looked at uh, different uh, fault uh, configurations uh, or um, uh, fault uh, conditions for which the network uh, changes and then network connections, how we have to do, we covered that. And we also looked at how to get the impedances of the uh, equipment in the power systems. And this, uh, so we have all the data now, we try to use it and try to simulate it. In actual conditions, we don't do this. We must simulate or we model everything in a short circuit program. And that takes care of, uh, uh, you know, calculating and providing us with the short circuit values and voltages and currents at different locations. So this is just to give you a concept. We'll go through a simple system, a three bus system, which has got two generators one generator generating at uh, 23 kV, the second one generating at uh, 18 kV, and then they are uh, from stepped up to 345 kV to transfer the power from the generating side to the load side. So now if we look at the data, uh, before that we will uh, we'll first determine what should be our base quantities. We just assumed the base MVA as 100 MVA. We also call this a system MVA. And the base voltage on the 23 kV side at the generator one is 23 kV. And for the generator two, it is 18 kV. And the transmission system is 345. Generator one data, if you look at it, it is 800 megawatt, 0 0.85 picofarad, uh, sorry, 8 point, 0 0.85 power factor is the, not picofarads, power factor. Um, and then 23 kV is there, uh, the voltage at which this power is generated. And then it is grounded through a grounding transformer, 13.8 kV to 240 kV. On the secondary side, we have put 0 0.5 ohms of um, resistive, resistive load on this particular transformer. So this provides a very high impedance and to limit the fault currents in case of a line to ground fault on the stator of the generator. Second uh, generator impedances we have got we are interested in subtransient reactants, as we said. Uh, we are interested in first few cycles after the fault occurrence. And subtransient direct acid saturated subtransient reactants is 0 0.18. Then saturated transient reactants, which is generally used in uh, stability studies, which we don't use, it's 0.2 here. And steady state reactants uh, is uh, for two per unit. Negative sequence reactants is same as a subtransient uh, positive sequence, uh, subtransient reactants X double prime D, uh, it is 0.18, and zero sequence reactants is 0.14. Please note that we are grounding through an impedance, high impedance, and that gets added when you want to look at the total zero sequence, okay? <clears throat> so generator uh, impedance on system MVA and voltages, if you want to convert, Z of the generator on generator MVA multiplied by system MVA divided by generator MVA will give me uh, to convert the will uh, is uh, is the equation to convert the impedance to the system MVA that is 800 uh, system MVA is 800 megawatts divided by 0.85 power factor uh, that will give me 941.17 MVA that is the rated MVA of the generator. So now your uh, subtransient reactance on 100 MVA base is just 100 divided by 941 times its uh, rating on, on the generator base, which comes to 0 0.1912, and subtransient and then uh, negative, uh, we don't use it here, but we have calculated it here. 
and negative sequence is same as the subtransient uh, reactance and this is also 0 0.01912 and zero sequence is 0 0.01487 now we have 0.5 ohms on the 245 side of the grounding uh, resist transformer and then if you convert it to 34 kV 13 sorry 13.8 kV it becomes uh, square of the ratio of voltages times the uh, 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 impedance connect uh, resistance connected on the low side which is 1653 ohms so zero sequence impedance r0 is actually three times this value because i0 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 from each case goes through the neutral which becomes three times i0 the impedance reflects in the zero sequence network as three times the value connected on the neutral so it is 49 59 almost 5000 ohms connected and the base impedance is kv square divided by system mba which is 5.29 on 23 kv and then r0 is 937.5 per unit it is almost infinite x0 can be neglected as it is too small compared to r0 here x0 is the one which 0 0.014 uh, that was given by the generator now the positive sequence impedance negative sequence uh, sorry positive sequence network for the generator one negative sequence network for the generator one and zero sequence are shown here and then generator two we go through the same process uh, this is a 200 megawatt unit at 18 kV and the power factor it runs at is 0.9 power factor so uh, and then it has a grounding transformer at 0.4 ohms connected to the secondary side of full kV to 240. Now if you go back and look at uh, generator data subtransient reactance is 0 0.15 negative sequence is same as this 0 0.15 uh, per, um, uh, per unit on uh, on, on the generator uh, base and zero sequence is 0 0.14 it is grounded through a 0.4 ohms uh, uh, resistance okay so your generator mva based on 200 and then 0.9 power factor is 222.2 so subtransient reactance becomes 0 0.0675 uh, per unit and transient is 0 0.09 negative sequence is same as a subtransient which is 0 0.0675 and x0 is 0 0.063 i am going a little fast here because we are not deriving it it takes a long time you please uh, go through this slowly and try to uh, validate these numbers uh, there might be some mistakes uh, so please do correct it but the, the, this is a process how um, by which we follow and uh, determine the impedances so calculations are important i hope i have checked it completely but please do check it again now uh, the generator 2 is grounded through a 0.4 ohms on the 240 side of a transformer with a primary at 12 kV. You go through the same process and then it uh, turns out to be 1000 ohms on the 240 uh, uh, 12 kV side. And then because it is connected in the neutral, it gets multiplied, it becomes 3000 ohms. And then convert it to on the base, on 18 kV base, it turns out, uh, the R0 turns out to be 925. 9 0.9 per unit is almost infinite uh, when compared to the rest of the impedances. So the sequence network uh, here, the uh, positive sequence has got uh, the negative sequence and zero sequence are shown here. Uh, zero sequence is almost uh, resisting. Now let's look at the transformer one data, which is step up transformer for the GS uh, generator one. The transformer is 23 kV to 345 neutral solidly grounded on the 345 and MVA of this is 950 MVA. <clears throat> Percentage Z uh, is given as 11% on the 950 MVA and zero sequence impedance is considered to be same as the Y side <clears throat> and load loss is given to be 1000 kilowatts. So we can calculate uh, positive sequence impedance on a 100 MVA base. So you multiply the actual uh, positive sequence uh, impedance uh, provided by the transformer or short circuit impedance provided by the transformer manufacturer which is 0.11 <coughs> multiplied by 100 divided by 950 which comes to 0 0.0115 and then the negative sequence impedance is same as the positive sequence impedance we have gone through this in the last class and the zero sequence impedance z1 from the y side is same as the positive sequence 0 0.0115 but from the delta side it is open so it is infinite. So resistance you can easily calculate. Yeah, they have given the load loss as 1000 kilowatts. 
So based on 950 MVA base of the transformer, it becomes to zero point, it comes down to 0 0.001 uh, per unit. <coughs> so, <coughs> but it is uh, based on, uh, uh, you know, it's 0, 0 0.1 per unit. And neg resistance can be neglected in our calculations. We can just take it off, okay? Uh, we have used just a react, you use the positive sequence impedance as the reactance of the, uh, of the, transform of, uh, the transformer. So we have the positive sequence, negative sequence, and zero sequence uh, representation of the transformer one. And now if you look at the transformer two, we go through the same thing. Percentage Z is 13% on 250 MBA, and then load loss is 300 kilowatts. So we have to convert everything to 100 MBA base. So it becomes uh, 250, and then the resistance is 300 divided by 2.001. And we have just neglected this 001. Otherwise, you should have converted this uh, to uh, multiply this by 100 divided by 250 uh, if you wanted to use the actual resistance value. Okay, so I have positive sequence, negative sequence, and zero sequence. It's similar to transformer one uh, that was on the generator one. Now, transmission lines they have given uh, the, it's a 954 cardinal ACSR bundle conductor two per phase. And Z1 is given as 0.37 ohms per uh, uh, kilometer. And then uh, Z0 is given as 1.2 ohms per kilometer. Okay. So and we uh, just don't worry about the temperature. We are using the same one and calculating uh, it at 85 degrees. Transmission line positive sequence impedance. Uh, near base MVA is, uh, uh, base KV is 345. Base MVA is a system MBA, we call it as 100 M, uh, MBA. If you convert his base impedance is 1190.25 ohms. So the positive sequence impedance is 200 kilometers is the length of the line one, multiplied by 0.37 divided by 1190, that comes down to be 0 0.00542 plus J.062. And then uh, positive line two has an impedance of uh, 0 0.00461 plus 0 0.04, uh, six uh, four and then line three has point zero four six six uh, uh, one, zero zero four six one plus j point zero four six four again I told you that I have done these calculations just to show you how to do it you please go back and then you can uh, just verify these by going through these calculations to understand actually in the actual system you are modeling these on the on the on a short circuit program such as CAPE or Aspen or any other equivalent program, and then you just create a fault, you simulate a fault, and then you measure the look at the voltages. The programs do calculate. This is just to give you an understanding of how this calculation is done. I'm showing these numbers. Now, transmission line zero sequence impedance. We know the base MVA uh, base impedance is 1190. We are just going through the same equations and then calculating all these numbers. Um, line one has 0 0.0589 plus J 0 0.1928, and then uh, line two and line three impedances were given. Okay, uh, they are same uh, line length, so it's 0 0.0442 plus J 0 0.1446 ohms. So now the whole network we have shown here. Line one is uh, positive sequence, line two positive se uh, ne negative sequence, line one negative sequence, and line one zero sequence. And uh, line two and three, they have the same impedance and same line length, so their numbers are the same. They are shown like this, okay? Now, let's look at, create a fault at bus three, a three-phase fault. This is the simplest for us, so we will go through the uh, calculations for this. So we have neglected all the resistances in these calculations for the ease of calculation to show you. You can use the actual numbers and do it. It's a little more complicated, but the error is uh, not that much, uh, just neglecting the resistance. Uh, sequence networks connections, only positive sequence impedances for a three-phase fault. So now we will look at the positive sequence uh, impedance. Uh, then you have got a ground, and then you have got a generated voltage one, generator one and generator two are connected to that and then you have transmission line impedances that are shown here line two and line three and this is line one okay 
So we have um, uh, yeah, reduced this whole system into this. Then you will see you have to use a delta Y transformation to convert uh, this uh, network here into um, uh, so that you can uh, uh, get the right values for that. Okay. Now we know that we have a fault, a three phase fault here, but uh, so you are using this three phase fault, it has only positive sequence network. So then you are connecting this fault back to the uh, zero. That is how it is system is connected. So if you go back and reduce this, it suddenly comes down to this and the fault current is one and this reduces to 0 0.0529 um, and then it comes to 18.9 per unit, okay? The total fault current on a 345 gas is minus J, 18.9 per unit. What does it mean? Base MV current on 100 MVA at 345 is 167.35 amperes. So three phase fault current is 167.35 times 18.9. That comes out to be 3163 amps at minus 90 degrees. Now it is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. Why do we get 90? Because we have uh, neglected all the resistances and we do calculate like this. So this is for a three phase fault. And now if you want to go back and look at all the voltages, you use this current and then make this division and then try to go through this and then you have to go backwards and then calculate the currents as how these currents are divided and then you can go back and then look at what is a generator one, generator two, and how many, how much, how the currents are flowing in each one of these. So that will, uh, yeah, so you have to go backwards to convert them to phase currents, okay? So this is a positive sequence network, which we already know, we did that negative sequence is this, and the zero sequence, if you go back and look at it, your generators are not uh, coming into picture because it's delta connected transformers on the generator side and the Y connected uh, side. It's just the impedance of the transformers. They come and then you go back and then reduce it to delta Y, use the delta Y transformations. And finally, it comes down uh, to uh, this value. And finally, it comes down the zero sequence as 0 0.09678, okay? So note that your generators are high impedance grounded but it has no contribution for single line to ground fault on the 345 kV side because it is a delta Y transformer. So uh, if you look at line to line fault at bus three, then you go back and connect the positive sequence and negative sequence uh, uh, networks. And then B phase current is A square minus A times uh, one because A square I1 uh, minus, um, uh, uh, you know, plus A I2 plus I0 is B phase current. So if you look at it, it comes down to 16.37 per unit. So your three phase fault is 18 uh, uh, something, right? 18.9 uh, and phase to phase fault comes down to 16.37. And then, uh, then, then similarly, you can calculate the single line to ground fault. It comes down to 14.809 per unit. And one per unit at 345, 100 MVA base is 167 amps nearly that much. So you multiply these to convert this back to amperes. So this is the process we go through. Then if you look at it, we started with uh, this uh, three phase bus system. Then we reduced it as an in, into the network, the positive sequence, and then uh, we uh, neg uh, negative sequence and zero sequence. And then we go back and then connect it. We have for three phase faults, we have only positive sequence. And then for phase to phase fault, you have positive and negative sequence. Single anti ground fault, you have uh, uh, positive, negative, and zero. So the only one which I have not solved here is double anti ground fault. In that condition, the negative sequence impedance comes in parallel with the zero sequence. So you can go back and do these calculations. So this is how. We do the fault calculations if you're doing it by hand. So now uh, to just uh, recapture what we did in last four sessions is that we started with a simple um, uh, system and then we introduced, uh, we calculated the voltage current 
at, at the generator at the step up uh, on the high side of the step up GSU and then uh, we said that if you use actual magnitudes of voltages and currents it becomes very difficult for us to figure out how to calculate the fault currents. So then we went into per unit system where we don't worry about the voltage we just put the base voltage and then base MVA depending on where which voltage we are in if it is on 23 kV we took 23 kV as 1 per unit and 230 kV we took 1 per unit as 230 kV and then we found that if I use a per unit system then it is invariant of the voltages and it uh, per unit values remain the same irrespective of the voltage so I can easily connect a network then we went through and saw that we can use network reduction techniques delta y transformations and also we can use Thevenin and uh, Norton equivalent most likely we use Thevenin and then you can also use Norton which is the current and then the shunt impedance uh, not e uh, Thevenin equivalent to reduce the system from the fault point and uh, then, then calculate the voltage and current right that is what uh, we calculated but then we went into the three phase system if it is a three phase fault we can use all the known uh, we could have used all the known uh, uh, theorems and then uh, 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 you know practices for this but in a three phase fault if it is a single line to ground fault it becomes difficult for us to calculate what happens on the unfaulted phases how the currents get affected so that is where we introduce the concept of symmetrical components where a three phase system can be broken up into three sets of balanced systems and we call them positive negative and zero sequence right and then we just uh, went back and looked how uh, if we have a network also which can be based on the sequence uh, impedances not on uh, actual uh, impedance values then we can connect them in different fashion to get uh, the, to, uh, to, uh, to get the sequence currents and then convert it back to the uh, phase uh, quantities uh, currents and voltages and convert it back to the phase quantities that is what we looked at in that and then in the third, third lecture we went back and saw how to get the sequence impedances of various power equipment transformers generators transmission lines shunt reactors and then shunt capacitors and then if it is a motor which we didn't cover it just momentarily provides for six uh, it has got a subtransient reactance and we can use this and model a motor which can contribute to the fault for few cycles so that can also be done big motors to contribute for that and we can model motors also in the same way which we didn't cover then finally after we understood how to get the, do the per units uh, how to get the per unit values how to get the sequence components and then uh, how to connect them uh, what we did was we took a simple example of a three bus system here and then went through all the calculations and then uh, uh, calculated the currents, fault currents for three phase faults and line to line faults and single line to ground faults. So, this uh, in short uh, gives you a good picture of how the fault analysis is done in power systems. Why do we need this? We need to calculate the voltage and current at various values at various uh, uh, buses and we will use it for our relay setting purposes. Thank you and I hope uh, you got uh, something out of it. Just go back uh, to the, the network protection and automation guide um, from Alstom, which we are using here as a reference material. And also, uh, several books are available. Please search on that for symmetrical components if you want to get into more details. And then uh, please do look at it. Thank you.